Okay, guys, we are live. Uh, let me just check. All right, uh, just a minute. I need to check my audio is clear or not. Then we can start with this session. All right. So I guess we can start. Hmm. So hello everyone. This is me, Harshal Jain, aka Viraj, and today we are going to start this beautiful application. This is a grocery store and fully functional grocery store. And in this series, we will be building the front end of the grocery store. Okay, we won't be focusing on the back end material first, but we we'll create a separate series for specifically the back end of this one so that uh, you don't get confused about the front end and the back end. So in this series, we'll be focusing about the front end and it will take a few sessions uh, to actually build this grocery store because we'll be building each and every page of this grocery store. So if you want something else like an e-commerce platform for selling clothes or selling electronics, you can just change the images and the theme, then you are good to go. So this is a very great website and very great project you can showcase in your portfolio. You can change things, whatever the things you like to do. And I will try my best that you can make it customizable as per your own and if you watch these sessions properly these videos properly then uh, i think you don't need anything else to learn the react js framework uh, the library okay somebody someone will say it's a framework someone will say it's a library okay don't argue with that so yeah you will get perfect with react js if you follow this project and if you follow the backend project after this one like after a few videos, I'll start the back end of this one in a separate series. I'll inform that. So if you follow the back end, the back end will be Node.js and Express and the database will be MongoDB. So you will become a pro in back end also. So this is a very great project. You can start with this one if you want to become a must stack developer. Right now we are focusing on React.js. A few sessions will be focused on React.js. Then we'll jump to the back end part. All right. So let's start. And I hope uh, you are enjoying with Okay, we have uh, some people here. Hello, sir. Good evening. Good evening, brother. How are you? Hi, Tushar. Okay. And I wanted to know that how many of you are familiar with the uh, React.js library? Hmm. Tushar is saying we need backend. All uh, Tushar will be building the backend, but uh, what I'm trying, what I'm trying to do is first we build the front end part because some of the developers are only focusing on the front end part, and specifically I'll build the backend in Node.js. Some people will build the backend in PHP, so that's why I prefer I'll build the backend, I'll build the front end part first, and those who want to see the backend part can watch the further videos. Okay, but right now I have, uh, I will focus on the front-end part of React.js. All right, guys, we can start and so first of all, uh, I need to know that your React.js must be installed properly. Okay, so make sure you have installed. I know up to you state. Hello, Gurnav. Hello, Kratos. <laughs> Kratos. Okay, so uh, you uh, you know up to your state. So basically, uh, if you don't know much of React.js, then it will be fine. Okay, if you watch this project properly, then you'll get a lot of idea about React.js concepts. And uh, the basic requirement is somewhat the JavaScript. Okay, because React.js is also focused on JavaScript. So you must know JavaScript well and uh, HTML CSS part because uh, I will take it, uh, take you, consider you as an intermediate in HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Okay, that's what's the basic requirement for building this website. And if you know very less of React.js, then you are good to go. It's not any issue because building project is more important than learning the theory part. That's what I believe. So uh, if you know less of React.js, then it's okay. You can follow this uh, project. You will get to know more about React.js and you will get to know more about why should you learn React.js. Okay, you can learn more concepts after watching this project. Project. And I'll help you to understand each and every uh, thing which I'm going to use inside this project. 
okay all right so now uh, I'll, I'll i'll tell you first of all a few things are required so we'll go through the installation part first uh, just a few minutes will be required for that one and then we are good to go okay guys so for the installation you need uh first of all node.js must be installed if node.js isn't installed then you can simply visit node.js website and you can install it uh in our childhood, we installed games like clicking next, 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 like, uh, like. Okay, so similarly, we need to install Node just like that. So you can just install, download this long term support one LTS and you can install this setup. Okay, mine is already installed. So you just have to open this setup and you can click next, 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 and then you are good to go. After this, I think uh, we have uh, already installed Node.js. So how can you check that node.js is installed or not for your uh, uh, for your convenience i'll just show you how you can install node.js and i have shown you how how can you install node.js and how can you check node.js is installed or not so you can simply type cmd okay cmd and then you can type uh node node dash dash we are okay so you can see that i got my version 18.14.2 that's the long-term support one version which i have installed recently okay so you will get that and that's the basic requirement and one more thing is required then uh, that is uh, installation of vs code so vs code must be installed so you can just simply visit vs code website any idea how to speed up react native uh app startup time depends like uh, on your i think if it's slow only in your computer then i guess the specification must be low but if your application runs uh, in uh, slow in every platform like in your friend's computer too with a high specification uh, system then uh, there must be problem with your code okay so first specify the problem is it with the specification of your computer or with the code okay so uh, you just have to install vs code and if you're rich enough you can do for macbook okay i'm the windows guy so just install windows here and download for windows and then it will be downloaded start it will start downloading after after the download you just have to start the setup okay you just have to install the setup so setup uh, installation is very easy but make sure uh we get some of the fields while installing in vs code we get some of the fields uh, which are of uh, check boxes okay which are basically of some check boxes so you just have to take all the check boxes in vs code while installation okay after installation you are good to go why am i saying that you need to click or tick all the things in vs code installation because uh it actually saves a lot of time for example uh right now i'll just create a new folder um this is my gfg folder okay so i'll just create a new react app so for that I need to open VS Code. So there is a very great shortcut after you take all the things inside VS Code installation in VS Code inst uh, setup. You just have to open it with code. Okay, you will get this option after installing the VS Code in my procedure. I tested in real device 6 GB RAM. It takes five seconds. How can I make it one second? If you test it in real device, then obviously the problem is with your code only because uh, I believe that. If you're testing a React Native app in your real device, like uh, this must be the problem with your code. So uh, you can contact me on Instagram. Sometimes I reply, sometimes I don't because I get busy sometimes. But yeah, you can message me there. I'll try my best to reply. Okay. So yeah, VS Code is open. So you just have to install React Native. So for uh, React JS, I'm sorry, you just have to install React JS. So for React JS in, uh, installation, you just have to type npx, npx, create React app. Make sure Node.js is already installed because this command will only work if Node.js is installed. Okay, so you can type create React dash app, and I'll just name it as fit. Uh, G R O C E R Y. Okay. Uh, okay. So after hitting that, uh, I'm sorry, you just have to name it with small letters. So I'll just make it fit grossly. Okay. So I guess now it will start installing the setup of my React.js application. And then you can see that, yeah, we have a folder here, fit grossly. So now we are good to go. It will take a few minutes for the 
setting up part of the ReactJS application. It all it always takes a few minutes. Okay, so don't worry about that. They will be down, there will be some uh, packages uh, which need to, which need to be downloaded after this command. Okay, so it's downloading a few packages. Then we will start with the coding part. So I'll go through the template first. Okay, what we are going to build is you can see this is a very beautiful uh, page which we are going to build. Okay, so first of all, our today's target will be focused on the nav bar and this banner. Okay, we'll be building the nav bar and the banner. And as you can see that we will be also having some categories here. Okay, so I'll already show you how you can build these kind of how many days of project is this? Uh, it depends how many days in the, this will take to complete. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure it will take five days, 10 days. I don't know. Okay, so it's always about the completion, not the specific days, because I believe that if I if I have 10 days for building any project, I'll skip some of the important things. That's why there is no time foundation. I guess from the UFG side. Okay, so don't worry about the time foundation. I'll try my best to complete this project. Uh, each and every important thing which is required for building a grocery store or any kind of e-commerce platform okay so i guess now you are clear with this one and we are going to build the nav bar this front page and this banner and you can see that this is basically a scrollable banner so you can pass links inside this one but right now we'll be just building this banner okay this is scrollable banner and these images are coming from uh, unsplash.com the free images are coming from there okay so you can use their images they are copyright free images okay so and then we are going to build these categories okay if you click on any category then the category section will show up okay right now it's just static okay and here you can also see we have a few products we have a few products and i'll modify the css of this one i believe that it, it's not looking much convenience uh, much appealing so that's why i'll just change the css for this one don't focus on this one we are just going to do the map bar part okay and the banner part and if you get some time then we'll build this category section also okay so now we can start and i hope my react just application is installed so i'll just split my screen so that it's visible to you all and don't worry about the responsiveness. I haven't made this website responsiveness till now. Okay, so just uh, try to understand the code first. All right. So our React just application is set up and now we'll start this one. So first of all, we need to go to inside this directory. So CD, fit, FID, G-R-O-C-E-R-Y, fit, grocery. And then I'll start the application by typing npm start. That's the basic uh, setup for React JS. And then you, uh, you are going to go. Okay, so one project is already running that that's why it's showing me this error so i can just say why it will start in the other port so you can see that my uh, current application which we are starting from scratch is this one and the output is this one okay so now what we are going to do is first of all we need to create a few components and guys for a while i might not be able to reply your chats so just uh, post your comments in the live chat and i'll read that later on okay so now first of all we need to install one more thing uh just split this terminal and you need to type npm i react dash router dash d o m okay react router dom its installation is required because first uh, of all we will be setting the routing of this page uh the home page about page contact page etc etc so routing is very important for this one and then i guess we need to install a few more things like okay we'll cover everything later on first of all we'll set the routing part okay so here you can see that we have nothing but uh, app.js so for testing i'll simply type r a f c e by the way how is this shortcut coming from so uh, basically i have installed a extension named as es7 so just have to install the vs Guys, just turn it up. Okay. 
So if you have any queries, you can ask me in the live chat. And I just saw that my live chat window is not working. Okay, it will work in a while. So you can post your comments in the live chat right now. All right, so that's the basic thing. And you can see that, uh, how is this coming? You just have to install the ES7 plus extension. This must be installed uh, to get these shortcuts. You can see that if I type RAFC in app.js, you will get this. My React is still installing. Okay, Drishti, uh, your React.js application is in st still installing. It's okay. If you aren't able to code with me, that's totally fine. This session is live and will also be available for uh, future. So you can watch this video anytime, but try to understand this video first. That's very important. Okay, so we have uh, the basic uh, app text here. So I'll just change it to something like H1. There. Okay, so you can see that it's working pretty fine. Now we are going to set up the routing. Okay, I'm going to uh, I'm going to be like super fast with this specific project because I believe that you must be intermediate in HTML and CSS at least. Okay, and you must know the basics of React.js. Okay, that's what require what is required. So first of all, I'll import the React Router DOM package which I have installed right now. Okay, so make sure React Router DOM is installed. So I'll first of all type import and uh, I'll pass empty brackets from React Router DOM. Okay, so I have just imported React Router DOM. Uh, I have imported, uh, suppose I need to import a route from React Router DOM. Okay, and then we need to import routes from React Router DOM. We also need to import browser router from React Router DOM. Okay, so that's what re is required. And uh, I hope now the code is visible. So here you can see that first of all, we need to set, set up the browser router. That means the home page, the about page, etc. etc. So, so if suppose I am in the home page. Sir, please start making videos or projects in React Native Explo Expo. Please, sir, ASAP. I really love when people uh, actually ask for React Native projects because uh, they were actually very popular. So uh, I'll try my best to start with React Native also, but uh, right now I felt that I haven't covered the React JS project specifically. Okay, these big React JS projects specifically. So it is very important. If you want to learn React Native later on, then also you can watch this session because React Native is somewhat similar to React JS. Okay, you'll be uh, comparing them and you can see that the logic is quite same and the tags and the just this JSX concept is quite same. Okay, so you can watch this also if you want to learn React Native later on. So here I'll simply say that all of the all of the routes will be inside my route stack. Okay, route stack will contain all of my routes. Suppose my first route is this empty URL. Okay, first route is this empty URL and my second route is suppose slash home. Okay, for both of the cases, I want to show my home page okay so for that i can simply say first of all i need to create the home component so inside the src i'll do everything inside src so that you can just simply copy paste your src if you feel any problem okay later on okay so that's why i am uh, writing everything inside src so first of all i'll create a folder inside src and i'll just name it pages okay all the pages will be inside this one my first page will be the home page okay so i'll do one thing i'll simply write home page okay home page and now what you have to do is simply create a home.js okay home.js so first of all i need to display home.js okay so i'll simply write r-a-f-c-e okay home home.js whatever is in this page will be present inside home.js okay so we'll write everything inside home.js in components that means we'll create a number component and we'll call it inside this page we'll call it, uh, we'll create this banner component and we'll call inside this page we'll create these product category and we'll call it inside this page okay so just wait for that and don't don't worry about this css right now we were uh, we are not focusing on the responsiveness part Okay, we'll cover the responsiveness at the end of these, this series. Like, I guess uh, two, three videos will be taken for responsiveness. But for a few videos, we'll be only focusing on this uh, static look without any responsiveness. Okay, so yeah, here we have this home page. So first of all, I'll say that if user uh, visit this, uh, visits, visits this slash home, okay, visits this slash, slash home, then home component must be shown. And similarly, if the user visits this, empty url okay nothing okay uh, xyz.com so we must be showing the home page so first of all i'll simply say that sorry 
okay i'll simply say that the first round will be if the path is empty that means a single slash okay empty or a single slash then i want to show the home component okay so the home component must be imported first so just simply bring your cursor here and click here and then type control and space so you'll get the path here okay so you can see that with that shortcut i got my path so that's very easy or you have to write this path by your own that's why i tell you to how you can use this, these kind of shortcuts okay so you can see that the home component is here with the slash url similarly if somebody calls slash home okay if somebody calls slash home so i'll again say that slash home is called and i'll simply return the home page so if i call the slash home slash home okay so you can see that i have the home page but if somebody calls home one two okay so it must not be returning anything it must be returning 404 not found so i can simply say route path equals and if somebody calls any other path after slash or after home page or uh, apart from the slash apart from this home then we must show the division with 404 not found okay so i'll just give it a heading of 404 not found okay not found that's a very basic page you can see that if i call any page uh, apart from home or apart from single slash like if i call this page i must be getting 404 not found but if i call the single page the first page i must be getting the home component okay so now we can start working with the home component we don't need to create other pages like about contacts right now we'll focus that on the later on videos okay so here you can see that we have the home component inside home component first of all we need the nav bar like this we need a nav bar like this you can see at the top i have a nav bar so here we can simply say that first of all brother do one thing okay you can do one thing you can create a folder named as components all of these components are going to be inside the components folder what's the benefit of creating components the benefit of creating components like if you are creating the about page you can simply use the nav bar there also if you are creating the contact us page you, are, you can use the nav bar there also so you can call a single component in different pages so that's the benefit of calling components uh, creating components okay so react this is very great you need you must learn i guess every developer must learn react this it's a very great uh front end library you can say so i believe that you must learn react js if you are confused with that combo okay let's just make them capital c o m p o m e n t s okay components inside this first of all we create a suppose um, we can create the nav bar we can create the footer etc etc so first of all we create the nav bar folder okay nav nav bar. okay again again we can create another folder for footer suppose we will be creating the footer okay so uh, right now i'm just creating two components so first component we just name it as nav bar dot js inside navbar.js i'll simply write rafce okay and you also need to create the css inside navbar folder in the navbar.css okay so navbar.css is also here so i just need to import it in the navbar.js import dot slash navbar.css because they are in the same folder you can see okay so now uh, what we need to do is first of all we need to show this navbar in the home page so in the home.js in the home.js first of all we'll open the navbar we'll create the navbar tag here okay so we call the navbar here and as you can see as i hit enter you can see that i got the i got this imported from the components navbar navbar okay so you can see that this path is called when once i hit enter that's because of these extensions which i have installed uh you can install like es7 plus extension will help you to get these solutions okay or else you have to write the path full path on your own okay so it's up to you and if you also want suggestions like ai based suggestions which i get then you can use github copilot or tab 9 but uh, i guess github copilot is a uh, is a paid service so you can use tab 9 for ai based suggestions like if i hit uh like if i write p tag inside this one and you can see that it's giving me some suggestions okay so this suggestion is basically coming from github copilot and sometimes it's very beneficial if i'm stuck in any code and even i get stuck sometimes with my code so that's not a new thing i i, st I get stuck in every single piece of code which i am 
have waited till the until the date. So you can use these AI based suggestions if you know the syntax part at least. Okay, if you are not able to build the logic part, then you can take a help of a chat GPT or some AI based to uh, tools up to a certain extent so that it's easier for you to understand that logic and also save your time by uh, getting the suggestion at the same time okay so we have this navbar so for navbar first of all i'll just close this and uh, you can see that we have navbar component side home js yes, that's why it's showing me this one okay so now we'll first of all style the navbar and the navbar will be shown there okay so first of all i'll simply say that navbar anything inside navbar will be present inside the nav tag okay right now i'm just giving it a nav tag now inside nav tag inside the nav tag first of all i'll create my two sections the first section the first section will be the first two with this logo with this search bar and these two other svg icons okay and the second section will be these uh, text categories about us the contact us extra okay so that will be really helpful for making the website responsive and that's why i am giving these two sections okay so i'll just simply give it div class name s1 okay so this is the section one and similarly we'll be having the section two okay so this is a shortcut which i use every time in my cases okay so if you are watching any kind of code this is my uh you can say khasiat okay so you can name any kind of uh, css by the way so i prefer shortcuts sometimes sometimes my css is uh, garbage in the terms of na giving names okay so you can see that yeah s1 is where our first container S2 is our second container. So first of all, we need a logo. So I have a, a logo. So I'll simply paste that logo and you can put any logo here. So first of all, I'll create an assets folder inside this assets folder. I'll put my all my images. Okay. Assets folder. I'll put all my images. So first I'll put my logo here so you can download any logo or I'll provide this source code at the end of this video. So don't worry about that. Okay. So I am going to use this logo uh i created this logo so don't judge that it's very you can say a simple logo okay so you can create a beautiful logo and use it so that's my logo fit grocery i guess grocery is not never uh always not useful for the fit people but yeah fit grocery is not used by any website that's why i use this one okay so fit grocery first of all we need to import our logo so i'll simply say import logo from and where is my logo? My logo is in slash slash uh, assets slash logo dot png. Okay, logo dot png. Okay, so I have imported my logo, and now we are going to show our logo inside this one. So here you need to show your logo. First of all, I'll say that I will show my logo inside the img tag. Okay, so I'll create an img tag with the source of my logo and alternative of a logo text and class name of logo okay so you can see that we have this one and then again we need another container for our search bar so we'll create our search bar so i'll simply say we create a search bar and i'll just give it a name of some of s-e-r-c-h-p-a-r okay search bar so you can see that we have our search bar first of all i'll give it an input of input uh type equals text okay then i'll say place holder equals search for product okay so you can see search for products and more so you can see that i have passed some text products products and categories categories you are ideas okay so yeah here we have a input field with this placeholder text all right so we have this input field now we want a search icon so i'll simply say that inside a button tag i'll create my search icon so i'll create a button tag okay don't need to give any class name to this one and then you can uh, actually paste any svg formatted icon here so i'll simply go to hero icons i always use this uh, website because it's very really easy you just have to you don't need to install anything you just have to copy paste the icons from here okay so that's very great tool which i always use okay so you can simply type s-e-r-c-h and uh, the pro only problem with hero icons is there are very limited icons so they must add more icons that's what i believe but yeah 
enough okay we have enough icons here they will do the job okay <clears throat> Just copy the SVG, don't copy the, uh, just copy the JSX, don't copy the SVG, okay, just paste it here, and you can see after this, we'll be having our icon inside this one, okay, right now it's not visible because we haven't given this any CSS, okay, so now what do we have to do is we have the button, we have this search container, okay, so we have the search container, at the end, we want a few icons, first icon is for the cart you can see that first icon is for the cart and second icon is for the user and also uh, the number which shows the cart items okay so for that we can do one thing here you have to suppose if i suppose if i give a division and i'll just name it as class name right okay why am i giving this right because I see. Okay, so uh, we have given this a uh, class of right. First container will be for my cart. Inside the cart container, I'll simply show my cart icon and also the quantity. Okay, so second container will be of my user one. Okay, so uh, here you have to do one thing. Simply just go to this website and you can again search for cart. So you can see that we have various cart icons, but I believe that this one is fine. So I'll just paste my cart icon here. Okay, so I'll paste my cart icon here. And one more thing, I also want the quantity. So I'll simply create a span tag, span tag. And I'll say that it will have a class name of QTY. Inside this, I will have my quantity. Okay, so for, for now, I'll just make my quantity as zero. So we'll be using the use state. And I'll say, suppose, my quantity is suppose zero or something. So card quantity is with you state zero. That means its initial value will be zero. Okay, so zero will be present inside this variable card quantity. And then we are good to go. So we'll simply uh, call that variable here, CART quantity. Okay, so that's important because if you wanna, if you want uh, to merge backend later on, you just need to update this, okay? Why am I telling this? Because you can see right now it's zero here. Okay, right now it's zero here. Okay, you can see right now it's zero here, but suppose if I, if I make it one, so you can see I got one here. So that's why I told you, you can simply pass any values and call the variable in your, uh, in your, uh, in your project. Okay. In your HTML, JSX code. Okay. So you can see that we have the cart quantity, a quantity. And again, we want the user icon. Again, we want the user icon. So I'll simply say we'll be having a user icon. And you can see that we can again copy this one. This is this is good. Okay, so I'll just paste it here directly. Okay, directly because we only need a user icon and that's it. So you can see that I have passed my user icon also. So this is my user icon. And then now we will style this one. But first of all, we also need to style this one. Okay, so for section two, I have a few things. You can see that I have categories, about us, contact us, extra. Okay, so for that, I need to install a few things. Okay, first of all, I need to install Bootstrap. Okay, first of all, I need to install Bootstrap. So I'll just close this one first. Okay, so for that, we just need to install. First of all, you need to install npm install react bootstrap and bootstrap okay so you just need to install this one i hope it's visible then what then you need to install react bootstrap slash drop down okay react bootstrap slash drop down i'm not wasting time by showing you that page because uh, we need to save time and we need to finish this project okay so yeah you need to install these libraries and if you still uh, if you are still confused with these libraries you can check out my you can check out what you can check out my package.json okay you can see that my packages are here we react bootstrap is here bootstrap is here okay there is some problem with this bootstrap drop down uh, okay i got the problem because i have already installed react bootstrap okay you can see that react bootstrap was already installed it's not required okay don't do this step just install npm install react bootstrap and bootstrap just type this to install bootstrap for react js okay then you are good to go after this after this you need to do one more thing uh, in app.js or in index.js go you can go anywhere okay in index.js you can paste the bootstrap css okay the bootstrap css which is required 
so for that you can simply visit index.js and here you have to do one thing first of all you need to import import bootstrap bootstrap slash dist slash css slash bootstrap dot min dot css you just have to import this one it, once you have installed bootstrap and react bootstrap it will it will it won't be causing any issue okay so you just have to install things and then you need to start that again okay start, we can start the project again and after this after this you can see it's not showing me any error why am i installing bootstrap because it will be helpful for creating these kind of drop downs these kind of drop, drop downs can be easily created with bootstrap so that's why i'm using bootstrap and uh, you can create your own drop down because but it's a time waste okay we need to create a finished product that's why i am using some libraries okay they are helpful okay so now we have installed everything first of all we need to import a drop down in nampar because we need to use drop down okay so i'll simply say import drop down import d r o b d o w n from react react dash bootstrap slash d r o b d o u n but you can search about this one you can get, get various type of things in react bootstrap if you want to use bootstrap then you can search their website and you can use their components also okay but i'll be using some of the components which take a lot of time all right so you can see that uh, we have uh, we have imported the drop down and now we need to use the drop down suppose we need a category drop down okay we need a category drop down and my category categories are you can see that my categories are what fresh vegetables and fresh fruits so for that we can do simply we can simply type uh first of all you need to type drop down tag okay drop down tag then we need to pass the heading which will be shown at first so i'll simply say drop drop down dot t T O G G L E. Okay. And I'll first of all make the variant as variant equals empty. Okay. I don't want any kind of CSS for this one. And I'll simply uh, the ID of drop down basic must be passed. That's for the bootstrap. Okay. I got this from the bootstrap library. Okay. So uh, let me just show you how you can get this. So for that, you just need to visit React Bootstrap. Okay, React Bootstrap. And here you can see that a lot of things are given here. Just have to start this one. You can see that they have explained how you can install this one. Then if you need to import anything, you can create a you can import a button, predefined button, etc. etc. So you can use this one, but uh, I'll take you to the specific drop down section. Okay, I hope I guess they are not drop downs. Okay, so you can go to this one, I guess. We can do one thing. You can simply type react bootstrap drop down and then you can visit this page. Okay. Yeah, here you can see that they have explained how you can use this one. So I've created a drop down tag. Then we have the drop down heading, whatever the heading you have to pass. On clicking that heading, we get the categories. Okay. So for that, we can simply pass here the text which we are trying to show. So uh, make sure you have given the correct classes. So I'll just do one thing. I'll just copy this one. Okay. I'll just copy this one and I'll just paste it here. Okay. First of all, I'll be removing this one. Okay. Let's see that if it works or not. So here you can see I am getting this drop down button from Bootstrap. So it's working pretty fine. And I'll change the options and also change this heading. So first of all, I'll give the heading as C A T E G O R. I e s categories okay categories then i'll simply say that its variant will be nothing okay so that green will be gone and here you can see yeah it's pretty much nice and one more thing you can see that our first option is suppose fresh vegetables fresh and i'm just giving some random categories fresh vegetables okay fresh vegetables and then we can also give it fresh fruits and also one more thing house cleaning okay etc etc so you can give any number of categories you can see that i have three categories here okay so similarly right now i haven't passed anything in the href you can pass whatever the page you need to show after this one okay similarly 
we'll be having a about a section so i'll say that my first section is about us okay my second section will be uh, contact us contact us contact us okay then my third section will be uh, i'll just copy this one okay i'll just copy this one and i'll show my extra pages inside this one so i'll simply name it as extra okay or you can give it more okay it's much convenient okay so i'll simply type more here and then i need to pass the drop down options so for example i'll say that my first one will be what faq okay i want a faq section so i'll say that it will be containing faq text okay again i will be having a privacy section b r i v a c y privacy policy privacy policy okay privacy policy section then we'll be having the terms and conditions and so on okay you can add, uh, you can add endless number of categories inside this one so that's a very great uh, package for uh, react just you can use bootstrap in some cases that's very beneficial okay at first i i used to believe that bootstrap is a waste of time and nobody should use bootstrap but sometimes it's very great okay you can use bootstrap by the way so there is no crime in using bootstrap all right so here you can see that we have the drop down and i guess my s2 is also completed section 2 is also completed now we are going to write the style for this one okay we are going to write the stylings for this one so for that first of all i'll i'll, I'll simply write I can simply say that in navbar.css first of all i'll say my navbar will be of display flex and i'll just make it smaller okay so now you can see my navbar is here so i'll simply say my nav tag my nav tag will have display flex display flex and then flex direction will be column because i'll be having two sections section one section two they must be in column okay then i can also give it some padding of 10 pixel okay right now you won't be able to address any changes because the uh, images and the icons are too large we'll fix them and we can also give them a box shadow of 0 0 10 pixel 0 uh, and something like this okay something like this with the less opacity okay black with less opacity so i'm giving it some uh, box shadow you can see that it's getting some box shadow here okay so after this what do we need to do is first of all we'll say all of the svg inside the nav tag will be of width uh 25 pixels 25 pixels okay so all svg will go smaller okay so that's the benefit we can target all the svg at once so yeah we'll also give it a height of 25 pixels so that they become a square and then cursor will be pointer okay if i hover on them the cursor will be pointer and also i can say that if i hover on any svg svg then i want i'm sorry if i hover on any svg I want to make some changes first of all i'll part uh, i'll pass a root color which i'm going to use every time so it will be very safe to uh, use this one i can do one thing in app.css in app.css first of all remove everything from app.css okay then you then you can simply write some css here okay some global css here which will use everywhere so i'll simply say my root colors will be these colors okay i have simply created three colors and i'll use these colors as variables okay so you can change the theme anytime you want from the app.js okay similarly i'll do one more thing i'll simply say that my project must not contain any margin and padding and the font family must be poppins and the font weight must be 400 initially okay initially for any kind of uh, division any kind of tag okay so i have changed my font family and you can see the font family has been changed to poppins okay so now what to do is one more thing one more thing is you can see that this drop down is getting some boundary so we can remove this boundary we need to simply target the id of that drop down okay so we can also make it global because anywhere we are going to use the drop down i don't want any border or any outline i also want don't want any margin or padding okay so you can see that if i click on this and i hope we have given the correct class okay drop down basic hmm. Just a minute, huh? Drop down basic, drop down basic. Okay, let's see that if it works or not. Background color green. Okay, so you can see that it's not taking the CSS right now. Okay, 
what's the issue? The issue is that with app.js, I have accidentally removed app.css. Okay, so I'll simply say import dot slash dot CSS. Okay, then we are good to go. You can see that the borders are gone from the category. So you can see that, yeah, now it's pretty much fine. Now we can again go back to navbar.css. Okay, so if I hover on them, I can simply say that it's color will be dash of where dash dash c o l one okay so let's see if it works so if i hover on them you can see that its color changes to color one okay that means the green color which i gave in app.css okay app.css root so the variables can be used anywhere and if i change the settings from here if i change the colors or variables any kind of variables can be created for font family or any kind of thing you want you can create in root and you can use them anywhere you like okay so that's the greatness of these variables so now what to do is in navbar.css okay in navbar.css we'll target the s1 section one okay so first of all i'll simply say if my navbar has any image i want its width to be uh, around 150 pixels okay 150 pixels so you can see that the image got smaller now i'll say inside the nav i want my s1 to be in uh, first of all, it must be having width 100% and the display must be flex. So you can see that they will be in flex. One more thing, justify content space between so that the uh, search bar will be in center and the right section will be in right and the image will be in left. Okay. And one more thing I can say is suppose align items center. Okay. Align, I'll align item center and then what do we need to do is you can see that yeah, now items are in center after this okay, waiting for react native projects uh, yes anurag i'll be bringing much awesome projects in react native but for a few days i'll be focusing on react js because we don't have any uh, much complete react js on this channel so I, I wanted to create React JS, uh, React JS project from a pretty long time. So that's why I picked up the React JS this time. Okay, so we have uh, the search bar. I simply made it first of all display flex, and I hope I have given this a class of. Uh, uh, first of all, I close this one. Here you can see that it will have a class name of search bar. Okay, so inside search bar we have the input, and we also have a button. Inside that button we have a SVG. Okay, so now what to do is search bar. First of all, we have display as flex. And then we can give it a border of border of first of all, I don't want any border for this one. And then I want a box shadow similar to that one. Okay, I want a box shadow similar to this one. So I'll just copy this. And you can also create a variable for box shadow, by the way. Okay, so I have simply said that the search bar will have some box shadow. And right now, I don't know if it's taking the search bar because of the spelling search bar. Okay, so now you can see that it got some box shadow. Okay, so after this, we also need to give it some border radius. Border radius of suppose five pixels. Okay, and then I'll say overflow will be hidden. Okay, so you can see that the border it is here, but we need to fix things inside the search bar division. Okay, so what do we need to do is first of all, we can also give it some padding of around five pixels. So it has some paddings and then I want the things to be in left and right justify content space between. Okay, so the icon will be in extreme right and the input container will be in extreme left because of this one. Okay, so now what do we need to do is we need to target the input. Okay, so nav search bar search bar inside this we need to target the input okay i'll say that my input will be having no border no border outline will be none so you can see that if i click on this i won't be getting any outline okay so uh, one more thing we also need to give this a width okay width will be suppose 100 percent if i give it 100 percent not too much uh i'll just give it 50 percent of any page okay so it will take 50 percent space of any page okay so it, this looks nice and now in the input we can say that uh, first of all, it must take 100% width so that if I click here, if I click here, then it must be selected. Okay. If you don't give it 100%, if you don't give it 100%, if I click here, it's not doing anything. Okay. That's why I am giving this with 100%. Okay. So now we will target the SVG present inside the search bar. So I'll say inside search bar, target my SVG. 
SVG and I'll say that its color color will be COL1 that means the green color which I have passed so COL1 okay so you can see that it has COL1 but I'll do one thing I don't want any kind of styling to the button over that SVG okay so I'll say that the border will be none border will be none okay and color background color background color is supposed transparent okay that's gone and you can see that yeah we want one more thing the cursor is pointed okay cursor is pointed all right so then we are good to go one more thing is suppose if i hover on this button okay if i hover on this button i want a background color of uh we can do one thing we can pass the color here instead and i'll say that if i hover on this button hover on this button okay so i want my background color to be green okay I want my background color to be green okay so if i hover over the, over this you can see my background is green i want my border radius to be 50 percent border radius to be around 50 percent okay and if i hover on this you can see i got a perfect circle i want my icon color to be white okay so you can see that mm -hmm. i'm not getting my icon color as white okay that's some issue okay let it be with this button okay we can leave it as it is right now okay we won't be focusing on it's right so now what to do is you can see that we have our button here and let's see that if we can work with this okay control x and control v then i'll do one thing if i hover on this one if i hover on this one i have one background color of where dash dash c open one okay so you can see that if i hover on this yeah we have a background color of color one text color will be white that means the search icon color will be white and the border radius will be a circle so 50 percent okay so now you can see that yeah we have the search icon and i want one more thing i want some padding here so padding will be around five pixels suppose so you can see yeah now it's pretty much fine and then we can continue i also want to decrease the size of the text here so font size will be around 16 pixels okay 16 pixels or we can decrease it to 14 suppose so you can see yeah it's pretty much fine now what to do is we need to target the right section okay so inside the nav inside the nav we have s1 inside nav we have the right section okay so first of all i want things in place that means in a row so you can see they are in a row now what to do uh first of all i want to justify space between like a space between i also want to introduce some gap between the items so i'll just give them some gap so you can see that the right one has some gap and i want the items to be aligned in center for the right one that means this these two icons okay so now what to do i will target my cart icon okay i mean this cart section so i'll say that inside nav target the cart okay target the cart first of all i'll make its position related because i'll assign that number over that i'll fix that number over that icon and then i'll give the margin as zero pixels some margin and 20 pixels from left and right so it will have some margin okay then we are good to go now what to do is we need to target the quantity tag for the uh, span tag which i have created inside this one and then i'll say that first of all it's having a background color of again dash dash col1 okay col1 so you can see that yeah, now it has a background color of one and color is white text color is white i'll give it a border radius of 50 percent that means it will make a perfect circle and i'll make a width of around 25 pixel first 25 pixel width okay and height of 25 pixel okay and
okay right now right now i'm not able to give it a bit why am i not able to give it a bit let's give it some padding okay let's give it some padding of around five pixels okay now it's fine okay so now we can say first of all I, i'll make its position as absolute okay position as absolute and and then and, and what can we do is if i make its width as 20 now okay height as 20 so you can see yeah it's pretty much fine so i'll just make it 25 25 okay and i also want one more thing first of all i don't need any padding here you can see now i am getting some okay so that was the problem with this i actually make i had actually made made it uh relative now it's absolute so now it will work i want this to be in top top uh, suppose minus 15 pixels, so it will shift to minus 15 pixel top. Now, also from right, minus 15 pixels. So you can see that it's in the top of the card icon. So it's looking fine. And now, what do we have to do is first of all, I want things in center. So I'll say justify content center. Uh, I need to make it display as flex. Okay, so now you can see they are in center align item center. Okay, so now we are good to go. And as you can do one more thing. I'll make the font size as 12 pixel and uh, I'll say align items. Okay. Text align, text align center, text align. Okay. Let it be. So you can see that, yeah, now it's in center and now we are good to go. So after this, you can see the first section has been created. We also need to create the second section. Okay. Our plan was to build the second section. So I'll simply build the second section. So I'll simply say that in nav, in nav tag, we have S2. Okay. We have S2. So I'll simply say that it's display will be flex. Okay. Display will be flex and I will have everything in center. Everything will be in center. Align items center. So they will be in center. And we can do one more thing. We can give them some padding of around 5 pixels to this container. Okay. And one more thing. I need to give it some gap of around 3%. Okay. 3% gap. And you can see now it's looking pretty much fine. Okay. You can see that. Yeah. It's fine. So after that, what do we need to do is if I hover on any A tag, okay, if I hover on any A tag, first of all, I'll say that any A tag will have text decoration done. Okay, so you can see that text decoration is none, color is black, blah, blah, blah. And I can do one more thing that the cursor is pointed if I hover on them. One more thing, uh, I can say if I hover on any A tag, okay. So I'll say if I hover on this, I want my color to be this green, okay. So if I hover on this, okay, now I'm not getting green color. Maybe there is some issue with this one. Okay, let it be. We are not able to get green color after this one. So we'll check that later on. Now, I guess the section of navbar is completed and you can see that if I make it bigger, you can see, yeah, it's looking fine. So after this, we needed to create the banner, but we will create that banner in, in next video and then we will create the further sections. Okay. So now you can see that the basic navbar has been created and we'll continue with this navbar and you can see that, yeah, it's looking fine now. All right. So I hope uh, you enjoyed this session and before ending this video, I'll upload this source code on GitHub. So first of all, I'll open GitHub and then we can upload it. So for that, you need to visit my GitHub profile, github.com slash VIRHJJ014. Okay, visit my GitHub profile. Inside this, uh, you get all of the repositories, all of the projects which I have created till now, which I have built till now. And you can see, yeah, I am active, active uh, in developer here. You can see, yeah. I upload pretty much every day. Okay. So you just need to follow me here. Don't forget to follow me here. GitHub.com slash V I R A J J 14. Okay. So in the repositories, I'll upload the repository first. So I'll create a new repository. It won't work in your one, by the way. Okay. So I'll just name it as Pit Grocery. Pit Grocery. And I'll also upload this uh, project in Varsal. So you, you can get the real time project. Okay. So we can create this repository. And I need to use this one. Okay. So I'll do one thing. I'll simply close this. I'll simply add dot. Okay. Get. 
okay i haven't created a git repository i'm sorry git init git add dot then we need to simply copy paste this okay these commands won't work in your computer or pc if you haven't installed github in your uh, laptop or pc okay so make sure you have installed in uh, your laptop the github cli and the things which are required okay they must be installed then only these commands will work for uploading on github so i won't be teaching that because it's time consuming but yeah now my source code is uploaded and i'll share the source code link in live chat okay so you can get this and uh, if you still don't get the link you can do one thing you can visit my github profile you just have to type github.com slash v i r a j j 014 okay in the repositories in the repositories you will get fit grocery you just have to mark it as start okay and uh, if you don't get this one you can search the name here directly fit grocery okay so you will get the grocery uh, whatever you want to search in my github profile okay so you can check out other projects too and uh, what i'll do is i'll also upload it on varsel okay so i'll just upload it on varsel so you can get the real website okay so uh, you can upload as number or as many of the react application as you want okay you can see that i have a lot of applications in varsel so i'll simply create a new one and i love varsel because you can see there is no limitation of creating projects so yeah it's very great okay so i'll just name it as fit grocery okay so i'll just deploy it and it will take a few minutes then the website will be live okay so it's very seamless and i don't need to pass any certification blah 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 for https etc it will create only uh, it will create my website it will launch my website with with its own url the url is quite short in varsal so you can upload your files to github first then you can connect to varsal to github that's some procedure i won't be telling that but yeah you can deploy your websites like this okay so yeah it's taking some time till then we can do one thing in the uh, in the live chat or in the description you'll find a link you'll find a link for mastering full stack development skills that's a paid course by geeks for geeks if you want to master your full stack development skills you can check out this course okay you'll find the link in the uh, description uh, so it's after the text looking to master your full stack development skills enroll now to our full stack live course using react js and node js so that's a very great course if you want to uh, uh, want to learn about this one you can check out this one okay so i guess i need to sign up first and yeah there is a batch actually a batch is going to be started so you can check out this one okay so this is a paid course by the way so if you want to purchase it then you can you can explore other ones also there is a free course which i have conducted but it has some limitations you know like it was for beginners and you can say if you want to learn for intermediate and advanced level then you have to uh, you can purchase these courses or else you can check out this full stack boot camp also this is a free course you can start for this one in the live section you will get my live sessions okay you can get my live sessions here so you can check out the recordings of these sessions also and uh, do check out this course that's a very great course so now i think my project has been deployed and you can see that now my project has been deployed and my website has been deployed okay so whatever changes i'm going to make will be shown in this website so i'll just visit this url and you can see the url is very short you can see fitgrocery.varsel.app now this is a you can say the shortest url which which anybody can give you for free so you can see i got fit grocery not varsal not app if i have given some smaller you a smaller name that it if it was available then i will uh, i will simply get that name okay so you can see that varsal is a great platform you can launch your website there for free okay so it's not even annoying varsal dot app is not a bad word which you can give to anyone as a, a domain name okay so that's a very great uh, platform you can install varsal and you can use varsal and it's uploaded my website is uploaded my react js project project is uploaded and it's working fine okay so that's it for today that's day 1 and in the next videos we'll be covering the next page and next pages and the next sections of this website that's it for today from my side if you have any queries you can uh, actually message me on instagram my instagram profile is harshal_1311 and i'll take you to my instagram profile okay don't worry
so this is my instagram profile you can follow me here and you can message me here if you have any queries regarding this project or any of my projects okay so that's it for today and i'll see you in the next one till then see you have a good day bye bye